Today we're gonna to learn my six tips to help you with a fast wisdom tooth recovery and eliminate pain. I've used these same tips to avoid using any pain medication when I had three of my wisdom teeth out a couple years back and I'm using it right now and refine the technique uh, after I just had my, my last and final wisdom tooth out. And in this video, you'll learn my favorite tips and hacks to help you with a fast recovery, avoid pain, and even save some money. Let's get into it. So as I mentioned, I just had my final wisdom tooth out and uh, I'm still a little puffy on this side here. This side is my sort of regular face. I'm not sure if you can see it too much here. It's the swelling has gone down significantly, but puffy side, regular side, puffy side, regular side, puffy, regular. I had a pretty invasive last surgery. The first three teeth that I had were pretty easy. They, you know, kind of popped them out and I, was, uh, I wasn't sedated, I was medicated and just awake during the process. This final one though, I was sedated and they really, they really had to get in there. It was under my gum and a whole big thing. My jaw was definitely a lot more puffy than the last times that I had it. Using these tips, I, I still have not taken any pain medication. My first overall tip I will call the CCR technique, which is the comfy, cozy recovery technique. Ultimately, when you get out of the dentist, they're either going to sedate you or give you some type of medication to make you crazy or loopy or whatever it is. You're gonna to have to find someone to be able to drive you home because you're not gonna be able to drive yourself, that's for sure. Because you're gonna be heavily medicated, you're probably going to be sleepy. Make sure to pack ahead, bring a pillow. Things are always better when you have a pillow around. Wear some comfy clothing, that's always a good tip. Bring some slippers, heck, bring a blanket if you want, right? That, that passenger seat is your domain, you make it as comfy and cozy as you want. The other thing that you wanna do is you're gonna be resting on the couch for a while, right? Lap up that relaxation time. So catch up on some binge-worthy Netflix shows. The couch will be your area for the next probably 24 hours for sure. Last thing that you wanna do during the CCR technique is to really make sure that you are well hydrated. Now that's what I call high quality a tool. Water is always important regardless, but during this time when you're trying to heal, etc., crush back that water and keep yourself hydrated. The next overarching tip and technique I'm gonna call the ice ice baby technique. So the key part to fighting uh, your, your puffy face or inflammation is in the first 24 hours for sure is icing your face as much as possible. Now I have a gel pack. Um, I think these work really well because they're very flexible. They stay nice and cool and they can you know conform to your face. So ideally you have one of those, but if you don't, you know, putting ice in a bag works uh, just as well. So as I said, icing your face within the first 24 hours after surgery is the most important. Ideally, you continue that all the way uh, for 48 hours after the surgery, but it kind of loses its effectiveness after the 24 hours and definitely after two days. So now let's talk about the icing technique. I myself like 15 minutes of icing and then 15 minutes of recovery time. So during that recovery time, you wanna make sure you put that uh, ice pack or, or ice or whatever it is back in the freezer for it to keep it cool. And then after 15 minutes, you bring that back on. Make sure you just keep repeating it as often as possible because that is going to be the best way to make sure that you are pain free uh, throughout this whole session. So next, the thing that I'm gonna show you actually is my little tip or hack to keep your ice pack on your face. You know, ultimately, holding the ice pack on your chin or cheek or whatever it is for 15 minutes, uh, it, it's exhausting. It's a hassle, it, it's no good. And you know, you can go out and, and buy like a strap that's for recovery for wisdom teeth, but it, frankly, save yourself money and just do what I'm gonna show you to do, which works very well and doesn't cost you a dime. So you have yourself your hoodie or your jacket on and the setup's pretty simple. You just grab yourself your freezer packs. Ultimately, it depends on which sides uh, your, your wisdom teeth on. Do you take them all out? You have all four out. You need to freeze on both sides. It offers, offers that option, obviously. You just grab them, stick them in the side of your cheek here, and adjust around until it's comfortable. Every hoodie or jacket will have these drawstrings here. And there you go. You have yourself a makeshift freeze pack. It's simple. You want the other one? Just make up a little bit more space. Make yourself... Uh, much more presentable as it, as it were. Looking good, right? Huh? 
Huh? Who cares what it looks like? Ultimately, you just had your wisdom teeth out, your puffy faced, you're probably groggy still. Freeze. Freeze, freeze, freeze. That's all that matters. The next technique that I'm going to go into is the fish out of water technique. Now, if your dentist is anything good, uh, they will hopefully supply you with a syringe that looks like this, has a little hook on the end. Uh, what you want to do is use this and, and rinse your mouth out, particularly after you have any meal. Any food sitting in uh, the cavity of where your wisdom tooth came out, that's going to be a big, big source and potential issue and cause for any pain down in the future. To rinse your mouth out, you're going to want to do a combination of salt water and uh, warm water and, and mix them together. Ultimately, what you want to do is mix one half teaspoon of salt with one cup of water. What you want to do is get the water, the, the warmer the better, and you want to keep it on the, the wound area uh, as, as long as possible until the water cools down, spit the water out, take some more, and inject it in, and, and keep doing that until you remove all of the, that cup of water. So ideally, you want to do this warm rinse about four to six times throughout the day, but more if, if you possibly can. The more frequent, the better, and it's really gonna help you out. Make sure you don't squish this too hard around the wound area. You, you're just wanting to gently flush out things. Uh, you, don't, you don't wanna use big giant force either. That's not a good idea. But try and have the water as, as warm and as hot as possible to keep it on that area, and that's really gonna help drain the wound and make sure that your, your inflammation stays down and, and makes you heal that much better. And really make sure to do one final good session of the warm water salt rinse just before you go to bed. The other thing that you can do is have a hot compress on your face. Now, I don't really use that technique. Uh, to me, the, the hot water in your mouth, if you're going to do something, that is for sure the way to do it. And that's what I spend most of my time focusing on. Um, some people might get a bit of a soreness, a muscle soreness in, in their jaw because it's maybe stayed in the same spot for a while. So you can use, you know, that, that same uh, gel pack. Uh, they can be heated as well. And you can put that on the side of your face. I find that the, the heat kind of disappears quite quickly. So that's usually why I don't use it. And some people put hot water on the cloth or something. But after that, it, it's such a short period of time before the cloth gets cold anyways so I don't use it. But you can massage just the muscle um, just in front of your ear here. Just, you know, do whatever. Use whatever massage technique that you dream up of. I'll leave that to you. Okay, let's talk about sleep. What you want to try and do is keep your head elevated as much as possible. Lying on a flat surface, um, your, your head will be in the same uh, position or height as your heart, and so blood can tend to flow and accumulate again in your wound areas, and so you wake up with a way bigger puff of your face. So the way to keep that down as much as possible is to keep your head elevated and above your heart. So I like to put a couple pillows behind my head and, and just keep your head slightly tilted above your heart. Uh, and and it, yes, it's probably a little uncomfortable during the, the, the first few nights to keep it elevated. But again, these things will really, really help you uh, to keep that inflammation down. And that's really the fight that you're always trying to do. And lastly, let's talk about the don'ts. These are all the things that you absolutely want to avoid to make sure that you don't end up with something called a dry socket. And I'm not talking about like a dry socket wrench or anything like that. And I'm also not talking about a dry sock named it. Hey, how's it going? What I'm talking about is the really painful part that can happen if the blood clot of your wound ends up getting pulled out. And that can happen for a number of ways. One thing to keep in mind is exercise. You don't really, you don't want to exercise in the first 24 hours for sure, but really you want to keep it moderate and light exercise, if, if any at all, for the first like seven days really. The first 24 hours is very important. You just want to relax as much as possible. For smokers out there, absolutely no smoking. Doing any type of sucking motion um, in your mouth will really increase the chance of getting a dry socket and I don't think it's worth it. So get yourself a patch, keep the smoking to a minimum or ideally none at all. And for you non-smokers out there, um, don't use straws or I either uh, for the drink. That's still that same sucking motion and that constant repetitive sucking can pull the blood clot out of your uh, tooth area and give you that dry socket. One really big thing for me that was tough is no spicy foods. Uh, you have to restrict your diet down a little bit 
try and keep with smooth, soft, mushy foods for the first little while. And spicy foods are just one of those things that you just can't have, unfortunately. Some sacrifices have to be made, of course. Other foods that you want to avoid are like popcorn and peanuts, things that are sharp that can also that potentially stick actually in the wound area. You want to keep again to those soft, mushy stuff. Ultimately, I hope you learned something in this video, and if you did, please subscribe. In this channel, we go through tips, tricks, and hacks that will make your life better. Family toast, wasting our time so you don't have to.